Hi, this is Kerry Landholt. If you've watched my other screencasts on RequireJS, you may realize that we're making many requests for the modules that are loaded asynchronously. What I'd like to talk about now is the RequireJS Optimizer. And to show you how to access that, we'll go to the RequireJS.org site. This is the primary RequireJS documentation site. Along the left hand side of the screen you'll see optimization. If we click on that here you'll see a number of the optimization topics and I want to scroll down just a little bit where we'll see the r.js adapter for Node and Rhino. I'm going to click on that and it will go to the GitHub site that's hosting r.js. r.js is a JavaScript file that is the optimization for RequireJS. What you'll need to do is go ahead and download this and you can download from the, the latest tag or simply from the master if you're feeling lucky. Inside here, we're really looking for three files. If I go to the dist folder, you get RJS. So that's the key uh, JavaScript file that you're going to need. And we'll come back and inside lib, I think is where we'll find the other files. Yes. So inside the lib folder, we're going to go to Rhino and download the js.jar file. The js.jar file is the Rhino JavaScript runtime engine allows you to run JavaScript outside of the browser. And I was mistaken, I thought we need three files, it looks like we only need two. As long as you have Java on your machine, which I do, I'm running a Mac and all Macs come with uh, Java. So let me just show you, actually let me get to the file system. I have an existing application right here. It has a number of modules uh, in various folders just to kind of mimic what you might do in a, in a real production ready application. Inside the build folder I've thrown in that js.jar and the r.js file. What we want to do now is use the optimization techniques provided by RequireJS and minify and concatenate all of these modules. So I'll show you a few techniques how we can achieve that. So the first thing is to be able to work with the js.jar file. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and written the basics to get working with the js.jar file and r.js. So all we're doing is invoking Java and passing in a couple parameters, including js.jar. Then inside that, we're asking it to run a, a particular section. In the, this case, it's a, a shell command. You could actually put debugger there and, and watch it in real time go through debugger. We're passing in the r.js file, and I'm giving it the dash o directive here, and that really gets you into the optimization settings for r.js. Then here I'm passing in one parameter, and that's build.js. It relates to the build.js file here located in, in the build directory alongside the build.sh, which is a shell command, js.jar, and r.js. Before uh, we open up this one, which is kind of the final concatenate and minified version of the, the modules, I want to load up a few others just to show you some of the commands, just to show you some of the settings. So I'm going to throw in uh, another file I've already created called concatenated modules.build.js. So here all we're doing is providing some settings in the JSON format. The first one is the base URL. So this is the URL where all modules are in reference to. The main config file, and I'll open up that in a moment. The name of the, the module, main, and where we want our minified, optimized, concatenated files uh, stored. And in this case, we're saying optim optimize none. So these are the very basics, and I'll, and I'll run through that in just a moment. So let me come back to the build.sh file. Now I've written this with slashes at the end of each line and this just allows you to copy and paste this into the terminal window and I'm running uh, the terminal here and I'm going to paste it. If you have those uh, slashes at the end there it won't go ahead and invoke the command right away it allows you to type it in there. So all I want to do here is type in that JS configuration file. In this case it's that long uh, we're concatenated, modules, build.js, and I'll hit enter. So as this goes to work, you'll see there it, it uh, is tracing the dependencies and scripts slash main. So that's going through and snaking through the whole dependency chain, dependency tree, collecting all of the, the scripts, combining them, whatever your instructions were in your configuration file. And that, that will take just a few seconds, and there it goes. And it outputs um, all of the scripts that it came in contact with, and it's finished here. Okay, so we can see in our file system now that it created a file inside scripts called concatenated-modules.js. So what I want to do, I want to load that up into the text editor and show you what happened. So here's jQuery with, you know, you can see none of it's minified. 
Um, if I continue to scroll down, I'll scroll way down near the bottom because jQuery is quite long. And we'll start to see, okay, here, great. Start to see some of the other modules and you can see some that I wrote. So all this did in this um, configuration is it collected all the modules and put them in one file. And it's the file name here as described in the out parameter, the out option. And you can see it put it in the scripts folder exactly where we found it. So it found them all and it combined them all in the sequence uh, that it, um, they were discovered. One thing to note is that all of the modules were named. Here's another name here and here. And if we go to the file system, and here's, here's unsubscribe, for example. If we load up the unsubscribe.js module, you can see it's not named here. Part of the optimization technique or optimization utility, r.js, it went through and went ahead and named those because it, it has to reference those modules some way or another since it can't use the file name because all the modules are located in one, one file now. It went ahead and named them the name of the file. That's kind of nice. What I'd like to do though is show you how this site works before we proceed. So here I have the, the site. It's a basic uh, single page application with uh, no scripts reference. I have them all commented out. So I'm going to load this up in uh, Safari on the Mac and we'll refresh it. And I have the inspector open on the network tab right away just showing you there's there's nothing going on. I have scripts selected so we, we should see any scripts loaded right here. So I'll refresh it just to show you there's nothing there. And if we return to the text editor, what I'd like to do is uncomment this first script uh, file here. And this is using require.js and loading main. Let me first, however, show you what main is. Here's main. And all main is really is it's configuring a number of paths. So I have a reference to doc, document, publish, pub sub, dirty, text exchange, or text uh, change, jQuery, and then it's running the app.js file. And that's all that's doing. So it's really setting up some uh, some of the paths. So now that I've uncommented the script tag, let's go ahead and, and run the file. I'll refresh it and we see a number of JavaScript files loaded, even some in, in parallel. You can kind of see that there and no errors or anything. And if I start typing my name in that text box, you can see it immediately went to orange. And if I backspace, get rid of it, it goes away from orange. This is an incredibly basic page, and all it's doing basically is tracking the dirty state or the clean state of this field. And that's really, the heavy lifting is done in this dirty.js file. Okay, so let's go back now to the text editor, and we'll comment back that first script. And second one here, uncomment this script. This script is using require.js and then loading the concatenated dash modules file. And that's the one that we went ahead and created with that first build configuration. That's that's this file here, right here. Now, let's go back to the browser, refresh, and here we go. We get two JavaScript files. We have require.js and the concatenated modules.js. Now, type my name or something, and I get the orange, clean it, it goes away. So the functionality is still there, even though it's only loading the two files. So there you can argue that we've made an improvement. We're making two requests now to the server instead of the 12 or 14, whatever it was before. It's nice to create our project using modules and small modules, testable modules, but then optimize them somehow for our production application. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other options provided by r.js. Let me throw another pre-canned build file into our build folder here and this one's called concatenated uglified dash modules dot build dot js what this one is how it differs from the other one is i've removed the optimized none you have to explicitly state that you want no optimization the default optimization for r.js is to uglify it so what this is going to do is basically the same thing as the other one did it's going to scan main.js grab all those path settings, grab all the files, put them in one. So that's the concatenation part, put them in one file and minify the thing. So this is this will be the ending file result. Let me go ahead and I will copy this kind of boilerplate terminal command. Let me clear this just to make it easy. I'm going to, what was the file name? I've already forgotten. So it's concatenated-uglified. And then let's, as soon as I hit enter, it will start to build. The output file will be located in scripts, so we should see that generate. So I've hit enter, it's gonna run uh, run through the scripts slash main.js file, collect all of those paths, then that last line in that file, if you remember, was require 
app. So then it's going to load up app.js and all of its dependencies, put them all together uh, in one file. So that's the concatenation part. And you can see now it says uglifying the file. So it looks like it already concatenated them. Now it's uglifying, which is the minimization part. So that should finish in just a moment. There it finished. So let me go ahead, load up that new file right here, concatenated-uglified-modules.js. It's a mouthful. In the text editor here, and you can kind of see that something doesn't look quite right or not maybe not what you expect, but it is in fact minified. If we scroll down, you'll see it. You'll see all the JavaScript files on one line there at the bottom. And if I scroll way over to the right, which is the end of the file, you can see the modules reference that's part of this application. So it's all there. What it did do, however, that may have thrown you off. I know it did for me for just a moment. Is it left all of the license information, all those comments that were at the beginning of each of those modules, left them in there completely intact, but it did throw them in one right after another at the beginning here. Now what I want to do is come back to our index.html and uncomment comment this next script file or this next script reference and this should use that concatenated uglified modules js file so i've commented everything else out and uncommented that one we just created we'll go back to the browser let me refresh and we get still two script files the required js and the concatenated one and we'll just verify that it does work but this time the file is a lot smaller because it's been minified so we've made an improvement there we've optimized it by concatenating the files and minimizing it Let's take it one step further. Let me go to the file system. I'm going to drag one one other uh, build configuration to our build uh, folder here. And that's concatenated, uglified, no license comments modules. It's really identical to the last one. However, it has this additional command of preserve license comments false. Uh, and of course, a, a new name, new out parameter there. The importance of that is is exactly what I uh, showed you a moment ago, all those comments at the beginning of the file. I'll copy my um, shell command and I keep having to delete this uh, build.js because I want to explicitly state which build file I want it to use. I mean, I don't want to use build.js because that's the last one I want to show you. Let me do this one here, uglified, dash, no license, and so forth. So I'll hit enter to, to run that one. So now I think it's done. Let me load up that file in the text editor. And here we go. We have one line of code and it is pretty long because it's all of those modules, which includes jQuery. So here we go, we have a pretty small file. Let's go back to index.html and we'll uncomment this line just to make sure at each step we're able to run the application. So this is concatenated, uglified, no license comments modules. Go back to Safari, refresh the browser, test that it works. It does. You can see it is referencing that name, the one that has no license in it. How can we improve this one more step? That step really would be, how can I get rid of require.js being an additional file? They've provided a mechanism for this, and that we'll do right now. That is in this build.js file, just the, the one that is plain, build.js. Let's load that up into our text editor here. Let me find that. I'll load it. Okay, so what this has different from the last script, the difference are these few lines here. So this is a little bit tricky. What we're doing here is we're creating paths, and you can see I have a key there of require lib and the value of lib slash require. If we come to our file system, you'll see in libs that we have require.js, so that module is there. Then I have this include key with require lib as its value. So that relates to the key here in pass. And the reason you do that is you can't just say require here because that is reserved. It won't operate properly. So you kind of have to alias the name saying, all right, I want you to include this module. Since we have a pass that represents it, we have the reference here. What include does basically is say, okay, I know this module isn't referenced anywhere but I want to make sure you include this in this build. In this case, I can go ahead and just copy this shell command, paste it directly, hit enter. Okay, now let's go ahead and open that up in our uh, text editor, scripts.min.js. And here we go, we have one line, no comments, lots of content. I can already tell it required JS is included in this scripts.min.js because of the uh, global variables referenced here. Let's come back to our index.html. We'll comment all the scripts out except for the last one, which references our scripts.min.js. One important note here, there is no data-main. There is no need for that because we're loading required JS as part of that one file, and that one file has 
all of the modules. Let's just make sure it works. We'll go to, back to Safari. Refresh. Okay, so we have our scripts.min.js. One JavaScript file. We'll see if uh, the project works, and it, it does. This has been Carrie Landholt. Thank you very much.